All right, hello everyone. My name is Peter, and today we're going to do a little bit of drawing. That's really, that's really about it. All right. Someone sent me a grab bag of fun pens that we can choose from here today. Tennis racket, kitty cat, some, whatever that is. Watermelon. This one seems to be a semi-functional recorder. bunny, and a unicorn. I'll do eeny, meeny, miny, mo to choose. That seems fair. Let me throw this one in there too. <clears throat> eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a tiger by his toe. If he hollers, let him go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. My mother says I should use this pen to draw with. Oh. Well, you know, the Kawiko Sport. A fountain pen. My favorite kind of pen. Among other favorite kinds of pens that I like. Here we're going to be drawing in this Nebula, Nebula Note sketchbook, which I have some scribbles and sketches in already. Some recent stuff you might have seen. This looks like a good page. I noticed that the I just refilled this nib and it could use a little wipe off there. It just seems like it has a lot of stuff on it. So when you're drawing with fountain pens, it's always nice to have a Paper towel nearby just in case. Let's see. Make sure it's working. And I do like draw it, drawing and writing with fountain pens for these videos because when you write with a fountain pen, draw with a fountain pen, uh, just the angle you're holding it at makes it so I can put the camera straight over what I'm doing and my hand doesn't get in the way as much. So we're just going to start without thinking too much about what's going on here. I think that's good. Oh my goodness. I think I'm going to be having to, my throat is a little bit scratchy. I'm going to be having to edit out some scratches. Excuse me. Uh, if there, my, my, my intentions were to leave this video pretty much unedited and uncut, but I think there's a little part there I just edited out because my throat's a little bit dry and scratchy. And, Keep having to stop and cough and drink some water. I don't want to leave that part in. Anyways, I hope all of you are doing okay. I, uh, I don't know. Just want to look. I don't know. This, this ink and this paper actually does really well together. It's pretty satisfying. Wait, where's the ink bottle? <clears throat> all right, I'm back. I had to take like a. I know I just started, but I had to take a little break to eat a to eat a lozenge because it wasn't until right when I started that I realized my throat was all scratchy and dry and I was coughing and I had to drink all this water. So I just took a little lozenge to kind of grease the gears, if you know what I mean. All right. I don't even know what I was saying, but everything's working now, <clears throat> I think. Did I ask how you all are doing? I hope so. If I haven't said so, my name's Peter. And speaking of my throat and everything, I mean, this this winter, I have experienced a dryness. A dryness like never before. I have started to have to use lotion on my hands, which is something I've never had to do before. And I know that may sound um, incredible to some of you because I know that there are some people mostly... Like my family, I grew up, like my sister and my mom all grew up using like tons of lotion on their hands, right? And I was like, I, 
I don't understand why you're using lotion. Because mostly I grew up, most of my life, I had this the opposite problem where I didn't want lotion. I wanted something to, I wanted something to dry my hands out, really, because my I I really have chronic clamminess of the hands. That's really my main problem. But now, I don't know. Maybe this winter has just been, this has been like the perfect storm of something about the chemistry of my body changing where I'm finally st starting to dry out and not be so clammy. And also it's been very, very dry. My hands have been getting crusty and and dry and I've had and cracking, you know. So I've had to start putting lotion on my hands and start putting uh, like Burt's Bees chapstick on my lips for the first time in my life. Before, it, I just didn't like the feeling of how it made my hands feel all slimy and slippery to put lotion on my hands or make my lips feel all slimy and slippery to put, put chapstick on my lips. But now, oh, it's just pure relief. It just feels good. Plus, I got like this multi-pack of Burt's Bees stuff and they have all these different delicious flavors. I know you're not just supposed to eat it, but you can smell it and kind of taste it coming off your lips, right? Got like the coconut one and the mango one and this, these red pomegranates or something. I don't know. It's good stuff. It's still not the greatest feeling to have slippery hands from lotion, but I mean, like, I'm not using it right now because like it would feel awful to have slippery hands, slippery fingers to try and try to hold a pen, right? But, uh. It's definitely worse to have, I don't, know, you can, I don't know if I should point it out, but you can kind of see my skin is a little bit crusty. My palm right there. I'll try not to make too, make too big of a obvious point of it. But besides that, besides all my dryness problems, which you probably don't want to hear a lot about, everything else is mostly going okay. I haven't done one of these videos in, I feel like quite a while. Now, the nice thing about doing these real-time videos where I don't uh, speed it up is I feel like I can be a little bit more comfortable to rotate the paper. Usually I try not to, I've like trained myself to not rotate the paper because if I, once I speed up the video, if I'm like rotating the paper a lot and then I speed it up, then I feel like it gives everyone like some version of motion sickness if the paper's spinning all the time or something. And now, even if I'm drawing and not recording it at all, I, it's just become like a habit not to, not to turn a paper, even when I think that can, can benefit you. Like everyone else should freely rotate the paper, but I haven't. I, I've robbed myself of that joy in life, the joy of paper rotation and everything that goes with it. I don't really know what's going on in this drawing, but it feels okay so far. I really do like the lines this Kuiko Sport makes. Uh, yeah, Kuiko Sport. This is the, what nib is this? EF Extra Fine. Even though it's extra fine, it still still puts down a good good amount of ink, which I enjoy. It's not miserly. Just kind of draw some of these little shapes here, kind of just kind of free form some shapes, and then I can come back and uh, kind of define them a little bit more later. How's that sound? Yeah, here we go. Maybe fill this in a little bit. Can you hear the pen on the paper? I wonder if it's bleeding through. Let me check. 
Oh, it's doing pretty good. I mean, I can see it a little bit, but it's not bleeding through at all. And it's drying pretty fast on there. You can see when I flip this over, a little bit of the wet ink went onto the back of the next page. I like the sound it I like the sound the nib makes on the paper. It's almost like I'm cutting the paper with some sort of exacto knife or something. I don't know if the mic setup I'm using lets you hear it very well though. I'll keep if I keep making more I keep, see the problem is I I have, I'm like a little bit restless with my drawing setup. I keep changing it and I, I'm constantly changing my the setup I have with the microphone and the cameras and where I'm sitting and what I'm doing. So I, I just feel like I never completely fine tune it. So I get it how I just exactly how I want it with hearing my voice just right and hearing the pen on the paper. But maybe one day I'll find the perfect sweet spot where I'm content to sit there and really fine tune it. Right now I'm using a, uh, a shotgun mic. I'm going to rotate the paper. Hmm. How does that make you feel? The rotation. Makes me feel weird. I don't like uh, This feels a little better. How much do you rotate the paper when you draw? A lot? A little? I'm enjoying the the hatch the hatch marks here in this drawing like this hatch hatch eggs hatch and so does my pen some darker darker areas in here for contrast come back and I don't know maybe, see I, I, I kind of don't really know should I should I make the dark areas first like up front or come in at the end and make the dark areas pretty much however I do it it seems to work so I shouldn't overthink it so I could just come right in here and just kind of choose some random chunks and color them in. Oh, I just realized the camera's kind of shaking. I'm just pretty much sitting at a card table right now, so it's not that sturdy. Whenever I get too into it with the scribbling. I'm gonna color that in.
I don't know about whole, this whole area right here. Like I feel like I made this line too too straight when the rest of it is a little bit more organic. So maybe I can disrupt that a little bit. But you know, sometimes a little bit of contrast is good as far as the organic versus less organic. Some, you know, what was it was someone said, you know, like there are no straight lines in nature, but I'm not sure if I believe that. Also, I have to sneeze. I think you can find straight lines in nature, especially when it comes to like, you know, like crystals, you know, look at snowflakes. Aren't those completely made of straight lines? Different like rock crystals and structures and stuff like that. Don't those have straight lines? I mean, maybe not perfectly straight. Or maybe like, there's probably plenty of straight lines in nature if you just look at a tree, right? And then you look at another tree. Boom, straight line between them. You look at a leaf and then a rock. Straight line between them. Okay, that's probably not what they meant when they said no, there's no straight lines in nature, but I think I have a point. Because isn't that what a line is anyways? Just, uh, just the distance or something between two points. I forgot the definition of a line, but like here, say this is your tree. This is a tree, okay? And then here's your leaf. Straight line. Just like that. In nature. Also, it bugs me that Everyone seems to assume that humans aren't part of nature and everything that humans do aren't part of nature. I don't understand how anything can be unnatural. At what point does something start being unnatural? I don't, I don't, I think everything is natural. I think, uh, the, the, the phone you're watching this on, the computer you're sitting in front of, is part of nature. Who gets to decide at what point something becomes too complex or complicated? Is a, a beaver's dam unnatural? Because it's like they cut down trees and built it into a dam? Or was it when the first humans cut down trees and built it into shelters. Was that when it stopped being nature? Is it just is it just everything humans do that's not nature? I don't understand. Aren't, aren't we in nature and part of it? This is, you're watching me do natural stuff right here. These are natural lines. You're watching it all unfold. You watching me is natural. Good job. I'm probably just, probably just nitpicking on different definitions of natural and nature though. This is coming along. Maybe we should rotate again. It's looking good. Look at this. But I have to take off my hoodie. I'm working up a sweat. Kind of scribble fast. Don't think about it too much. 
This kind of reminds me of like the top of a heart, like a heart valve. Even though hearts don't really look like that because usually it keeps going, right? We just we just tend to see like heart diagrams of disembodied, dismembered hearts. You know, if you look up like heart diagram, it's like looking at a, imagine you looked at a human diagram and it was just a human with all the arms and legs chopped off. Hearts, hearts don't really look like that. They're usually plugged into the the rest of the body, the arteries keep going. I don't like it this way. It, feel, it feels upside down. It does feel upside down. I want this side to be darker. I'm kind of imagining that the light is coming from uh, this direction over here. That's what I'm imagining. This is the this is the sun over here. It's shining like this. And so that's why there's like some darkness here. This is like sinking down in there. This is like a little shadowy spot, right? This is the dark side over here. This can be dark. This is dark down in here. Just kind of imagining the 3D shape of the thing. This can all be darker down here. I think I need some shapes on the the dark side of the form, the dark side of the moon that are just completely black, formless, or not formless, but textureless shapes. Like this, yeah. These are just totally in the shadow. Yeah, this should help. cross-hatching to go with the hatching. That's what I like about this pen. I never feel like I can, I never feel like I can scribble too fast or too hard. It can, it always seems like it can keep up with me. Not really sure about this area right here is the part that's bugging me the most at the moment. Should I zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole thing? This does kind of feel like a weird, um, kind of a weird messed up heart, despite me saying that this isn't really what I think hearts look like, you know, disembodied. Kind of has the same vibe. Draw some tendrils coming off of it. angles. I'm 
My refrigerator just made the weirdest noise. I think, I don't know if you can hear it because hopefully I don't think you can hear my refrigerator because I feel like the whole point of a shotgun microphone is it's very directional and it's, my fridge is directly behind it. But the, like the compressor on the fridge is, it was just like, it sounded like a video game noise, but it was the fridge. All right, I like it. I like this this dark area back here now. It's kind of coming along. What do you guys think about this so far? For some reason, I really do like <laughs> random arrows and stuff. It's like, it's like, what is exactly is going on here with the arrows all right that one got a little bit carried away a little bit carried away All right, I'm gonna zoom out, take a moment to just look at it. Kind of blur my eyes a little bit to get a feeling for where the dark areas and lighter areas are, the kind of, I don't know what fancy word for it might be like, excuse me, like tonal val balance or values or something. And I realize I might wanna do this. I have to, let me get a drink of water while I look at it. Mm. Stretch. <sighs> Popping my neck. I feel like I want something right here. Maybe something like shooting out or maybe something totally separate right here. Kind of just want to draw a circle. So I'm going to go with my gut. I drew a circle. The circle thing didn't really make sense, but I kind of like it for that reason. Some more kind of arrow things here. Maybe this, maybe this arrow will go both directions. Maybe I'll maybe I'll do like a arrow showing that this rotates. This is maybe I, I don't really like this part. It looks a little bit. It's like too narrow or something, I don't know. I'm not sure what happened with this thing. Maybe I'll do this. If I do that, showing it spins, maybe it has a little bit more dimension to it or something.
bring this part around, hanging out this side a little bit more. Some dots always help. Maybe I can do some, I want to draw here, but I have to be careful because there's wet ink right here. So you can see I already smudged a little bit here. That's the main, the best way to not smudge your drawings is just to be aware of where you've just put wet ink down. And it can help to blow a little bit on it. Or you can just smudge it, you know? You don't have all day. Or you might. I actually do have all day. Hmm. But <clears throat> at some point, you just... You can just be done and any frustrations or anything you don't like about this drawing, you can just store away in your mind and carry them on to the next drawing. That's what the next page is for. Which, that's the cool thing about sketchbooks and the fact that you can buy packs of paper and that <laughs> pens hold enough ink for more than one drawing or ink bottles, you know? There's always another drawing. I'm kind of at that point now where I can just stop, but if I know that if I keep sitting here and looking at it, I can keep finding, I know that if I keep sitting here, I'll be able to keep drawing if I really wanted to, but I don't know if it'll, if the drawing will really, you know, keep getting better. It'll just keep getting more without getting better and possibly get worse. So I just kind of know that from drawing th thousands of drawings. All right, I think I'll stop. I, I'll stop, I'll stop. Thanks for hanging out for a few minutes and uh, accompanying me through this drawing, everyone. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. and. Uh, Thanks for, thanks for hanging out. Goodbye.